Hello everyone, Dr. Suresh here and in this video I will be talking about uh, the metabolic pathway of glucose, the major metabolic pathway of glucose that is glycolysis. So we are all aware carbohydrate metabolism is a main metabolism which is involving in production of energy. Okay, and almost all the cells in our body dependent on glycolysis for the energy, right? And so the other name of glycolysis to say that is MD Meerhof pathway. Okay, the other name of glycolysis is MD Meerhof pathway. And what are the requirements for the glycolysis? The main, the primary thing that required for glycolysis is glucose. So glycolysis is nothing but breakdown of glucose, or else you can say oxidation of glucose. Okay, glycolysis. Glyco here means glucose. Lysis means splitting off. So here the six carbon glucose will be splitting into smaller compounds, or totally the carbons will be removed. Okay, oxidation of glucose is nothing but removal of sequential removal of carbons from the structure. Okay, so here glycolysis, the glucose will be converting into pyruvate. Okay, that is the end product of glycolysis. Pyruvate is the end product of glycolysis, and the fate of pyruvate dependent on the availability of oxygen if there is presence of oxygen okay that is known as aerobic glycolysis the pyruvate will be converting into acetyl coa and this acetyl coa enter into uh, next sequential path that is tca cycle which is happening in the mitochondria okay and if there is no availability of oxygen this pyruvate will be converted or will be diverted in production of lactate okay and both the pathways will produce atps and but the only the thing is quantity of ATPs. Okay, that means the number of ATPs that produced in aerobic glycolysis will be different, and the number of ATPs that produced in the anaerobic glycolysis will be different. This we'll separately discuss in the another video that is energetics of glycolysis. So let's begin the proper pathway of uh, glycolysis. So any pathway you are going to study, okay. First we see where is this pathway is happening. Why? Because there are different subcellular organelles that are present inside the cell. Okay, right from the cytoplasm, mitochondria, peroxisomes, lysosomes, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, right. So all these are there. So each one of the subcellular organelle is having one or the other pathway, right. They will be strict with the like compartmentalization. So one pathway will be taking place specifically in mitochondria, the other pathway may not be taking place in cytosol. Right. So that is the reason it is very important to before studying any pathway, we should aware where is this pathway is taking place. In. So as we are studying glycolysis here, we should know where this pathway is gly pathway glycolysis is taking place. So glycolysis specifically taking place in cytoplasm of almost all the cells because we do we have different type of cells in our body and all the cells have cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm this glycolysis is taking place. and coming in uh, in detail about the glycolytic pathway okay so there are two phases involved in glycolysis one is first phase and the second phase so i'll tell you why it has been split into two phases first phase is energy investing phase or energy requiring phase where you have to spend the energy okay and second phase where you will be getting the returns that means gaining any business you take you have to spend some amount so that later on you will get be getting the profits same way here for the starting of glycolysis you have to spend some amount of energy in the form of atps and the second part of the glycolysis will be getting atps in return whatever the investment we have done the profits that we are getting so here in diagrammatic representation you see here few steps okay which will be involved in first phase where glucose will be converted into the product glycerol had three phosphate okay and that is the first phase okay where we have to spend ATPs okay and in the second phase where glyceraldehyde phosphate converted into end product that is pyruvate where we are getting ATPs you see here here investment and here it is gaining returns ATP investment in the first phase and ATP gaining in the second phase so we'll see the proper pathway of uh, glycolysis here so first thing that is fortunately happening okay with the glycolysis is phosphorylation and this is basic step why because once glucose enter inside the cell okay with the help of any transporter okay the same way it can go out of the cell right so to not to happen this to stop this something has to be added to the glucose to lock inside 
Okay, fortunately, the first step of glycolysis is phosphorylation of glucose. Okay, that means at the sixth carbon, as we are all aware, glucose is a six carbon compound. So the phosphate group has to be added to the sixth carbon and converted into glucose 6 phosphate. So this is the first step and committed step of glycolysis. Okay, and once glucose is phosphorylated, it cannot go back out of the cell. Right. So first step is glucose converting into glucose 6 phosphate. And two enzymes can be acting here, hexokinase and glucokinase. Here, both the enzymes work on glucose. Okay, and the difference is hexokinase is not specific to glucose. Okay, it doesn't matter whether it is glucose, fructose, galactose, or mannose. Respective of the compound, if it is a six carbon compound, hexokinase will phosphorylate it and convert it into concentrated phosphate form. And glucokinase is specific to glucose and specifically is present in liver. Okay, it works only when there is high concentration of glucose. Okay, that means glucokinase require high concentration of glucose and hexokinase will work even in the lower concentration of the glucose, right? And location is different. Hexokinase is present in all muscles in almost all the cells. Okay, glucokinase is present in liver cells specifically. So, glucokinase is restricted to liver. Okay, how glucose is converting into glucose 6-phosphate? Okay, so glucose will be added uh, phosphate to 6th carbon, I mean uh, uh, carbon 6, okay. And here the donor of phosphate group is ATP. Three, AT three phosphates are attached to the ATP. The terminal phosphate will be given to the glucose to form glucose 6-phosphate. So ATP is converted into ADP. Here we will be requiring one more uh, mineral that is magnesium. Okay, so in uh, the topic enzymes we have studied, any enzyme for this uh, activity we require coenzymes or activators. Okay, right, Co uh, activators are inorganic in nature and coenzymes are organic in nature. Here the activator is uh, uh, inorganic in nature that is magnesium. Okay, now second step, glucose 6-phosphate will be converted to fructose 6-phosphate with the help of the enzyme phosphohexose isomerase. Okay, here the difference between glucose and fructose is a functional group. Okay, in glucose is converted, key aldehyde is converting into keto form. Okay, isomerization within the structure, structural changes are happening. Okay, that is taken by uh, the uh, enzyme phosphohexose uh, isomerase and now this fructose 6 phosphate is converted into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate that means in fructose 6 phosphate only one phosphate is there and fructose 1 6 bisphosphate there are two phosphates and here again one more ATP will be coming in uh, donation of the phosphate group so total how many two ATPs we have invested here so that means these reactions all are comes under first phase of the glycolysis that means preparatory phase or energy investing phase Okay, so the enzyme here is phosphofructokinase 1. Okay, uh, the phosphofructokinase 1 is rate limiting enzyme of glycolysis and we'll study in detail about the regulation of glycolysis about this enzyme phosphofructokinase 1. Okay, and this fructose 1,6-bisphosphate will be converted into two aspects. So as I mentioned, glucose is a six carbon compound and glycolysis means we are splitting the six carbons into smaller parts, right? So here, glucose converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and fructose, fructose also six carbon compound. And now, one fructose 1,6-bisphosphate six, six is converted into one glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, that means three carbons, and one dihydroxyestone phosphate, that is also three carbons. So 3 plus 3, 6 carbons. Okay, you see here, 6 carbons. Glucose is also a 6 carbon. Right. So now, two substances we got in energy investing phase or preparatory phase, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyestone phosphate. So dihydroxyestone phosphate again can convert to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So total, how many glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate? Two glyceraldehyde three phosphate we got, okay, with the help of the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. Okay, what that difference between glyceraldehyde three phosphate and dihydroxyestone phosphate is functional group. Glyceraldehyde three phosphate is, is an aldehyde, dihydroxyestone phosphate is a keto uh, ketose group. Okay, here glyceraldehyde the now onwards the second phase of glycolysis will start. That is glyceraldehyde three phosphate converted to one three bisphosphoglycerate. Okay, that means glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is having one phosphate group. Here, one more phosphate group will be added. Here, you see glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is a three carbon compound. Okay, at the third carbon, phosphate is attached. Now, one more phosphate is will be attaching at the first carbon of the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Okay, here the donor of phosphate group is a inorganic phosphate. Okay, so which will donating the phosphate group, and here 
two reducing equivalents will be produced okay nad will be because two glycerol head three phosphates are there so two nad molecules will be involved here so two nad accepting hydrogen from the glycerol head three phosphate okay and converting into nadh plus h plus so remember this point so so far we have invested two atps okay and now we are getting two nadh okay two nadh with the help of the enzyme glycerol head three phosphate dehydrogenase okay now the converted 13 bisphosphoglycerate okay the converted 13 bisphosphoglycerate uh, converting again to 3 phosphoglycerate that means one phosphate has been removed okay one phosphate has been removed okay here two 13 bisphosphoglycerate are there okay so that's why two adps will be requiring to accept the removing two phosphate groups two phosphate groups okay will be accepted by two adps to form two atps okay we are getting two ATPs here as we are studying these reactions under energy gaining phase. Now the eighth step the three phosphoglycerate will be converting into two phosphoglycerate okay that means the shifting of uh, phosphate group from third carbon of third carbon to second carbon okay and here the enzyme okay the enzyme will be phosphoglycerate mutase phosphoglycerate mutase where it transfers the phosphate group from third carbon of phosphoglycerate to 2 phosphoglycerate okay and this 2 phosphoglycerate can be converted into phosphoenol pyruvate by removing water molecule by the enzyme enolase so remember this enzyme for enolase which is useful okay why because it has got clinical significance so in estimation of blood glucose okay we will be uh, giving our blood for estimation of blood glucose okay which are fluoride sodium fluoride coated okay where it inhibits the enzyme enolase at the last before the last step of the glycolysis and uh, it prevents the production of energy so it will not allow complete oxidation of glucose if completely uh, glucose is uh, oxidizing then what is the use of estimating glucose there is no glucose the glucose level will be fluctuating so that's why to stop the oxidation of glucose completely so the fluoride ions will be added to the tubes okay to inhibit the enzyme enolase and now this phosphoenol pyruvate converted into the final product of pyruvate okay where again the phosphate is there in the phosphoenol pyruvate right so that phosphate group will be given uh, to adp to form atps okay and finally pyruvate will be the thing so the reactions where adp is converting atp are the best example for substrate level phosphorylation because in our body there are two mechanisms for production of atps one is oxidative phosphorylation second one is substrate level phosphorylation oxidative phosphorylation you will be getting energy when reducing equivalents are entering into electron transport chain with the help of oxygen where these hydrogen ions will move the atps pump and produces atp okay and here substrate level phosphorylation we are getting atp at substrate itself without etc okay with etc without etc oxidative phosphorylation is atp production with uh, etc help and substrate level phosphorylation atp production without the help of uh, etc at substrate level okay so these are all the sequential reactions so 10 steps are there in glycolysis okay except first step third and ninth step so these three steps are irreversible okay these three steps are irreversible and rest of the steps are reversible okay so this also has got significance because at the time of gluconeogenesis we'll discuss in detail what is the significance of this reversible reactions and irreversible reactions thanks for watching thank you